computing is ultimately about making machines that are intelligent. So if we're going to understand what that really means, we really have to have an example of an artificial intelligence. So I've brought one along with me, this piece of paper. I claim this piece of paper is more intelligent than anybody in this room. In fact, more intelligent than anybody in this building. And there's a bunch of bright professors upstairs who think they're pretty clever. But this piece of paper, cleverer than any of them. So, do you all believe me? <laughs> or are you a little bit skeptical? Okay, what could I do to a piece of paper to make it intelligent? So maybe I'm winding you up, maybe I'm not. But what could I do to a piece of paper? Well, one thing people suggest is I could just write information on it. And if I put lots of information on it, it would be intelligent. But that, if you believe that, then you basically believe books of the Encyclopedia Britannica is more intelligent than people because Encyclopedia Britannica has got more information in it than you could probably ever remember. But it's not intelligent. It's just a book. It can't do anything. And so that's the thing about intelligence. It's not just cramming information into your head that makes you intelligent. I know you're intelligent because of what I see you do. And so it's what you can do with the information that you've got. So if I look out the window and see a squirrel hiding nuts or finding nuts that it had buried before, I know it's intelligent because of what I see it doing. So if this piece of paper has got a claim to be intelligent, then it's got to be able to do something. And what can it do? What can this piece of paper do that leads to me claiming it's so intelligent? Well, it plays its favourite game, noughts and crosses. It's never ever been beaten at its favourite game of noughts and crosses. And it's played lots and lots of times. And you probably know with noughts and crosses, you can't guarantee to win. If both sides play perfectly, then you should always end up with a draw. This piece of paper has won half the times that it's played. It's drawn about half the times that it's played and it's never ever lost at noughts and crosses. That's why it's so, so brilliant, why I think it's so intelligent. So if I'm going to prove that, that it really is as clever as I say it is, um, I guess we need some evidence. Would you like to see some evidence? Yes. Okay, I need two volunteers then. Okay, so if you stand here and you stand there, so what we're going to do, I claim this piece of paper is brilliant at noughts and crosses. If I'm going to prove that, we're going to need to play some games of noughts and crosses. But I don't want to play against human against human. What we've got to do is play a game of the piece of paper against humans. So that's what we're going to do. So you get to be the piece of paper. Okay. So I've left behind all its peripherals, its vision system. Um, and it's robotic arm and you're basically being that. So you've got to switch off all your intelligence. You've not got to think for yourself. You've just got to do exactly what this piece of paper does. You on the other hand are here to represent humanity. So essentially what we've got here is um, a competition between the best of paper kind against the best of humanity. But what I mean by the best of humanity is not actually you, I mean you Lord. OK, so just like he's going to do what the piece of paper tells him to do, you're just going to do exactly what the audience tell you to do. So we've got a similar situation. OK, so if we're going to play noughts and crosses, we need a noughts and crosses board. And then if you each get a pen. So first thing is, can you just read out what it says at the top? What, what does it I want? Next to? And I go first. So it's X and it wants to go first. Okay, so that's quite clever. It wants to go first. So what does it tell you to do next? So read out the moves that it's telling you so we know that we're, you're doing exactly what it says and not doing it, making things up yourself. Move one, go in a corner. Okay, so you get to choose the corner. It hasn't particularly said. And over to humanity. What do you lot want to do? So this is the problem with humanity. They can't agree about anything. So you maybe have got to either make your mind up yourself. Okay, so where do you want to go? Move two. If the other player did not go there, then go in the opposite corner to move one. Okay, so if you'd like to go in the opposite corner to move one. Back to humanity, where would you like to go? Well, uh, well, I'll try to do. Uh, right on. Okay, you've gone in the middle. Where does it want to go? 
if there are two x and a space in a line, then go in that space. Two x's and a space in a line, though, aren't because the o's there. So what does it want? Otherwise, do? if there are two zeros and a space in a line, then go in that space. There are two o's and a space in a line, so you go in that space, just doing what it's telling you to do. At this point, humanity quite often gets a little bit dispirited here, but of course, it's just a piece of paper. If you've seen what I've just seen, then it may not have done, it may not realise what's coming. You know, it may be so far it's just been lucky, but anyway, where would you like to go? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, top, yeah. Um, at this point, humanity quite often tries to cheat as well because humanity is that kind of, kind of creature. But anyway... If there are two x and a space in a line, then go in that space. So there are two x's in a space in a line, go in that space. My piece of paper has won, so I think it deserves a round of applause and thank you to the two volunteers. As I said, Incredibly intelligent piece of paper, more intelligent than anybody in this room, and it's just beaten you at noughts and crosses. Even better than that, it not only beat you, it forked you. So actually, from several moves before the end, you didn't have a hope anymore, you'd already lost. So that's how clever my piece of paper is. So, thank you very much to the volunteers. Thank you. So, let's do a vote. How many people now think that my piece of paper is more intelligent than everybody in this room. How, hands up if you think it's more intelligent than you. So that's basically worse than it was before. If the intelligence isn't in the piece of paper, where is the intelligence? That's the instructions. So does everybody agree that? So he said the intelligence is in whoever wrote the instructions. Yeah. Yeah. So is that where the intelligence, who, whoever wrote these instructions, that's where the intelligence lies. Everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay, so who do you think wrote these instructions? You. Yes, I wrote the instructions, so thank you very much. You've just said that I'm highly intelligent. What did I do with a piece of paper? I wrote instructions on it, instructions to play perfect noughts and crosses. So I wrote them in English so that a human could follow them. If I'd wanted a computer to follow them, I would have written them in a programming language, but essentially what I have here is a program for playing perfect noughts and crosses. And as long as you follow those instructions, whether you're a computer or a human, you'll never be beaten at noughts and crosses, at least if you play first.